the original user, it said. <laughs> several non-original ones. Evening, Fab, Tom. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Where's your microphone, Tom? Okay, so we're not good. Yeah, that sounds okay. Yeah, that sounds good. What's the time? Just gone seven. Well, this Terry. Yeah, well, I'll just explain. In the absence of uh, Terry, who's not doing very well, she's probably up and asking if I would chair this particular meeting. So, or... Uh, Hang on, can we just have a proposal from the second deputy to do that? Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Not proposed. Yeah, I, I propose, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Checking. Okay. I'll sign the second deputy. Those in favour? <laughs> you know. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Right, so um, I declare this planning and environmental committee meeting open. Right. So, um, Bridget's evacuation procedures, we all know that by now. Um, I could have an end of the right up. It's all been recorded, I guess, that you all filming. Yeah, I think so, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, and submissions from the public? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have on behalf. Okay. Uh, I was approached today because several people knew I would be on this planning meeting and there's a reference back to the common by the doctor's practice that um, when we approved the car park there was planting of trees but it seems to be reported that two trees were replanted that have subsequently died and they've been chopped down but there is no news on any replacements. Does anyone have any information? The, uh, the trees that have been recently cut down were in the hedgerow because they were diseased and we are going to look at replacing those ones anyway. So, yeah. Okay. okay, so there is an agenda for it, yeah? That they're putting some, uh, and not like the tiny trees in, we'll hopefully go to something a bit more substantial, so yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, they got very quick. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, they got very yeah. quick. Sure. Yes, Tom. Because it's a, you're asking for submissions from the public. I just want to actually give, give advance notice for the next year's community engagement for a meeting. Um, uh, we are actually planning for March. So um, if you want that document date, I can actually give it to you now so that if you can minute it and so that you can put it on your calendar for the next year, then that will be a great thing. Uh, because we are also doing some. The, uh, the 10th, Wednesday, the 10th of March. That's our full council meeting. 10th? Yeah, it is. And when it came through from South Gloss, I did go back to the lady in South Gloss and say... That is not in our calendar right now, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh. We did agree with the dates, yeah. yeah. We, we yeah. Then I'll change it, yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for informing so that there will not be any confusion, yeah. yeah. Well then, Tom. Um, I've got something which um, quite a few members of the public have spoken to me about, but it's it's already on the agenda, so I'll talk to you about it when we get to it. Um, right, apologies for absence, obviously yeah. Terry Cullen because she's not well, yeah. and is there anybody else that we know about? Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, declarations by members of the local government act 1972, I don't think we've got any more declarations, no. Announcements from the chair, well, as I'm standing in this chair, I don't have any announcements, um, except for wish you all a happy Christmas and prosperous. Yeah. The new year. Um, so the next item is to confirm the minutes of the 25th of November 2020. The correct record. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Um, ben in, in house here has proposed them. Who would like to second them? Is that first? Head second. Yeah. All in favour? Well, those are, shall we say? Unanimous. 
And then the next point is 6.1, which is to consider matters um, on the agenda not covered elsewhere. So the pinch point on the shared bookway pedestrian stroke cycleway, South Gloucestershire Council Local Transport Priority List link to COVID-19 social distancing. Would you like to say something about this? Um, yeah, it's just you, you've got the update it from South Gloss. It looks like they have finally agreed that we can, can have a physical site meeting in the new year. So I will definitely let councillors know when we get the date for that. Yeah, okay. Um, there, was, there was something else I read there, I think on the, about the first item, that, that um, Something a, bit more, something a bit more positive. Um, yeah, there's about there's three possible outcomes. The simple, low cost, affordable solution is identified in a program called and program for immediate implementation. Uh, no scheme is recommended. Um, more involved scheme identified. Da, 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 da. Well, it's, it's sort of positive. Yeah. They're, they are looking at it. At least so. they're not ignoring us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which we've got a bit of movement in ten years, so it's not bad. Um, sorry. Uh, right. right. The next one was six point two. Uh, South Gloucestershire Council tree planting in Bradley Stoke. Yeah, so you have the update in your agenda pack, and I did send it out to councillors, um, to all councillors, I think. So I met with the South Coast Biodiversity Officer and two members of the Street Care Grounds, South Coast Street Care Grounds team. Um, one of those, thanks very much, one of those two uh, street care people has worked in Bradford Stoke for many years, and so he was very knowledgeable about knowledge about knowledgeable about the various areas for tree planting so we've um, included the ones which councillors have raised so grass verge on the, the junction of grass verge on oak tree present. sorry yeah just having Councillor Pranian, who I think has just arrived. Yeah, so that one obviously where they took down the ash tree. There was a uh, South Gloss have also um, identified there's an area, green space, a green open space on the northern side of Primrose Bridge, which is adjacent to Lapwing Close. Oh, um, there's that one. Then there is the meadow grass verge on the edge of the nature reserve, which was highlighted in green on the map that you've got in your agenda pack. Um, and then we flagged up the area which is red in on the nature reserve as not being appropriate because that's where we have lots of um, picnickers and people playing ball games in the summer. Um, and they've also identified the highway verges, some highway verges on Batesport Road. South Coast are also looking at some other potential planting projects over the next few years. So there is a sloping open ground by Paddock Close where there is the possibility of planting a box or a group of trees. They're also looking at planting willows on the steep bank by the stream soakways and palmers leaves close to the motorway embankment. They told us that they are intending to extend the wildflower beds on Brook Way all the way down to the Virgin Media Cabinets, and that will hopefully be done for next year. Um, they planted trees and wildflower beds on the bank by Rabbit Roundabout. We also identified the skate park as a possible location for potential biodiversity projects in the future. So South Coast Council will let us know when the tree planting sites have been finally agreed upon and will send out posters and letters to the nearby residents. No assistance is required for the actual tree planting, but councillors will be welcome to visit the sites whilst the tree planting is taking place. 
and it's anticipated that the planting will take place between January and March 2021. They said they can plant during cold but not frosty weather, but once the temperature warms up, the tree planting will cease. Did, did they not identify the bit by Walnut's Host? There's a quite a big um, grass area there. No. As you go around, you go to the top of Bozeland, you've got the roundabout, you head towards the Trenchard Bridge, and there's a green bit. I will, I will mention that to them. Yeah, yeah it, so, it, it's, um, the other access point to it is actually from Honeysuckle. Right, so Walnut's Close. Is almond almonds close bus stop? On the left hand side? Yeah. There's a quite a bit, a bit of green there. Yeah. So if I bus stop. Yeah, almonds close bus stop. Lovely, I can pass that one on. Okay. okay. So moving on to item seven, uh, to note the outcome of previous planning applications, uh, and documents pertaining to planning environment issues. Um, looks like everything that we decided, South Cross is sure has agreed as well. Yeah. Pass on that one. Um, number eight. And I know, sorry, can I just yeah. say, um, I know that, that councillors are sometimes quite sceptical on, on what is the point of us commenting on planning applications because South Cross don't actually take what we say into account. But the, the first one on that list, which is the Stratton House Seven Sages Mead one, if you remember that's the one with the hedge where we were querying whether the hedge was going to be removed, in their conditions for granting it, it says the replacement planting and subsequent initial maintenance of the new planting are to be carried out to the requirements of the South Gloucestershire Council Open Spaces team, which was exactly our wording. So I thought that was quite positive that they actually yeah. took a comment that we made yeah. on board. So, moving on, number eight, to prepare responses for the proper authority regarding the planning of ways related to present state. We have five. Yeah, so bear with me a minute whilst I just share my screen. TRE, which is works to reduce limbs on the easterly elevation by four metres to one oak tree, which is covered by a South Loss TPO 2406, dated the 13th of December 2006. Sorry, at 70 Horn being close. Yeah. Apologies. Broke it again. Uh, <laughs> so this is this is the um, the so it's that tree there. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we have to get this there. Yeah, so it's this tree here. Yeah, that's great. Sure. Show you there in a minute. Yeah, just a sec, Tom. Yeah, so it's this tree at the end here. So there are um, three comments from neighbours. Um, two have supported and one objects. Uh, Tom, what? One, one, yeah, Chair, I just wanted to know why the neighbour objected to it, because there is a, it's actually reducing it, reducing because of the elevation, so. Just want to know. Bear with me a minute and I will um that one that's a support one. Let's try that one. 
found to be the third one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. This one quite out today. This is a small concept. This will be the other one. Yeah, number two. To read that, I think, rather than reading it all out. Uh, yeah, the it's got no effect the health of the tree. No, no, I jumped up the tree. But I don't think um, that would be an issue for me. It's reducing the lens from one side. Is it because of um, any other factors? I don't think that will be an issue. Anyway, as the result, TP already in place, they cannot damage a tree by... I propose uh, no objections. Oh, Sorry. Uh, who's got their hand up? Keith. Keith, yeah, what would you like to say, Keith? Unmute yourself, Keith. <laughs> Am I unmuted? Uh, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, you, you have your hand up, Keith. Hand up. In, uh, I'll, I'll second that. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. Oh, good. It's saying mute on mine for some reason. Um, yeah, no, I'll second that. I mean, I can see what they're trying to do. Uh, the canopy of the tree is big. They want to take off some of the limbs because quite a lot of the oaks locally at the moment are becoming quite dangerous. They drop. And obviously, if it's in an area where somebody's garden or a path, it's, uh, it's likely to cause injury. So... Obviously, yeah. the trees are getting very large at the moment, these oaks. So we have a proposal by Tom, seconded by Keith. Those in favour? Let's see what that is. Let's see what that is. Thank you very much, councillors. Good. Thanks. Number two. Over a minute. The erection of a single storey rear extension to form additional living accommodation. Installation of hip and gable roof extensions and two rear dormers to facilitate loft conversion. Seven Bracken Dean. Yeah. Yeah. So it is this house here, so that is the rear of it, so it looks on to Brookway, street image, so it's this house here, and it's one with 3D, so it is quite So that's what's there at the moment, and this is what they want to put on. Just wonder how does it affect the next door? To, to the, the to the or from the rear to the right. Yeah. Um, they're keeping the width, aren't they? They're not going any wider. Yeah. No, they're just going further into the. Uh, so I show you the. Presume it's it's not any wider. It's difficult just to see from that. Yeah, this one's. This one's quite good. Yeah, the yeah. plan should do it. So that is the existing block plan. And 
So it's this one here, obviously, with the insert around it. Looks like it's come out a little bit further. That's the proposed block plan. Right. Right. Anybody got any comments? There's a, there's a comment from Name, I believe it's opposite them, and says that they've got no objection whatever to the proposed extension. Knowing the residents as we do, we're sure the work to be done to the highest possible standard. When you say opposite, is it opposite? I think it's opposite in Bracken D. Yeah. yeah, well, not going to affect that name, is it? <laughs> It's got a different roof line already to several of the houses, so perhaps you can straighten up the roof line. Oh, yeah, because if you look at the roof line, it's different already, isn't it? Yeah, it's got like, yeah. it's in there, it looks a bit like it's like a corner strip. We'll actually straighten the roof line up. Well, it's not touching that roof, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's coming, yeah, it's coming out, so it's straight oh, up. Oh, yeah. So they did extension on the back and sort of the roof out? Yeah. Put the two dormers in it. Yeah. All right, two dormers. Yeah. yeah. Installation of hip to gable, roof extension and two of them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it? the two dormers are coming out the back, so yeah. I, I can't object to that. And uh, yeah, so you can see where they yeah. it's like yeah. the top top bit and they've straightened it out properly, yeah. It's like a Mac keys, uh not keeper, Jamie. Okay, I'll okay, propose it then. Uh those in favour? Uh, keys. Yeah, stand up. Tom, are you in favour? I lost, I'll see on this one. Okay. So, sorry, how many of us have come back? It's um, all but Tom's yeah. 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 Six in favour. I'm on Thank you very much. So the next one is erection of one and a half storey dwellings with access and associated works. It's 14 Grange Place. P2023 
centre and one and a half. So so this you can see where the parking is. So there's parking there for that house, and then there's parking over there for the other house. They also have a visitor park. No, they own another property and they have another bit of parking on the other side of the road. And they've been cleaning one garage, half a garage, yeah? No, they're changing the, the garage into the house. So they're not really going to have enough on site parking then, are they? I think they're both very small houses. So sustainable transport, and their comment is here, which is the parking people, obviously. So. Mm -hmm. Just one street car park in space. Well, the second to last paragraph the statement shows that they consider the road is entirely yeah. not just the, the location of the But so I don't know what to do there. Yeah, you stop rubbing out there and try to read it. Sorry. I was training it, yeah, completely that. One of the things um, which I am always think, it's our own planning offices that creates the plan parking issues one way or the other, because they will see a loop and do that, and what next happen is when there is a visitor, or actually yeah, there, there are two cars, there, there will be chocolate block. So I don't understand uh, why can't they wait in. Once the car park, parking space is gone, it's gone forever, and it's actually aggravating the situation. Yeah. Um, Keith, sorry, Keith, what do you want to say? Keith? Yeah. You've got your hand up, and you're on mute. Well, I keep saying unmute, and it's not it's not registering your end. You know. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Ah, right, good. Uh, there's two neighbour comments on this one, isn't there? There are. What are the neighbour's comments? Right. So... And my objection. Lack of parking. Overdeveloped site. Oh, right. Yeah, the two the two comments are the same comments from the the, the same resident who yeah. submitted a letter and also filled in the online one. I think so. It's the yeah. Same. Yeah. I anyway, I don't like losing the park. And, you know, if there is a losing of like a car parking space, I always used to have a traditional object into it. I don't differ on this case either because uh, I have no problem in someone actually making a drilling on top, but uh, losing your one's park, car parking space is not a good sign for Bradley Stone, which is already chuck a block and we have no, enough space for park, car parking. And here they mentioned about that guy has got four cars and this is not enough. I accept everything you say, Tom, and I will say it's Except what this neighbour says. One issue is though that south it comes within the South Gloucestershire requirements according to the letter from South Gloss. You're so, right there. You're right. You know, that is what I'm saying, okay? <clears throat> because of these loopholes, people are actually making bending the minting the rules and doing these kind of things. Of why the car park, the garage was there, was actually for a reason. If there isn't any space, they have to make sure that the space is available. But make sure it's been done. I also have garage, so I don't think it will be different to according to someone's whims and fancies. And I, 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 I'm, I'm objecting to it, but others, other councillors have the freedom. Others have the liberty to actually take 
on sand they prefer. Uh, so I am not dictating it anything. So I'm just putting my objection. Would the objection be in a survey development, Tom? Yes. All, of, all development and laws of car park spaces. Okay. And this is actually not determined, not good for a neighborhood like Bradley Stroke. That's right. Sorry? 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 Um, Ben's happy to second Tom's objection. Um, does anybody else have any feelings on it? Yeah, I would agree with Tom on that. Is that overdevelopment, loss of car parking, and loss of residential amenity? Yes, that's yeah. right. Thank you. Yeah. Especially for our neighbourhood like Bradley Street. Yeah. So that was proposed by Tom. So that's by Tom, by seconded by Ben. Um, would you like to vote on that proposal, please? Yeah. So we've got uh, Andy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. Keith. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very objected. Thank you. Okay, well done. Next one then is um, uh, number four, erection of a first floor side extension to form additional living accommodation, five Hells Horn Cliff. Uh, planning 20 stroke 23989S. Oliver Tippin. Is this house here? Yeah. This one here. Yeah. So it's a little problem to that. Not that. Okay. Now they lose the garage. Well, they still got the garage door, but if you actually, when you zoom in, yes, the garage they is. Lost um, the garage. Yeah. <laughs> so. so that is, this is what's there at the moment, and they are going to have this bit as a store area, and then... So it looks like a garage, but it's not a garage. Yeah, so it's going to be the storage and then the playroom. That would be, that's where the yeah. garage was. Can we just go down a little bit on that same plan? Yeah. That brown gold plan? So, this is the car oh, oh, parking. I'd, I'd just like to see the detail of the plan. Sorry. Can we just um, close in a little bit so and see the whole of that plan? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Oh. So we've got office, playroom, store. Uh, extra bedrooms upstairs. They're actually going to end up with six bedrooms. Oh, that's in competition with you, Tom. Yeah. Um. Hmm. And they have identified that there will be, at the moment they have two car parking spaces, but there will be three car parking spaces. Is there objections from any neighbours? Mm, no. No, nothing at all has been... Any assisted. thoughts from the rest of the committee? I think there's other houses in that range that are very similar to that already, actually. Well, there is. Sharon, can you do the street scene one a minute? minute? Identify the front of that house? This one? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay. Happy. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I would move it. I second that. And Keith's proposed and is second. And those in favour? That's that. That's uh, Yeah, I think so. Thank you very much, Councillors. So yeah. the, last, the last one, number five, is erection of two-storey side and single-storey rear extension to form additional living accommodation. 
forty when two forms drive. Any of the edition P twenty twenty three nine nine two F. Two story sites and there's probably only seven sisters. They actually finished building those. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look a bit odd. Oh, chop off, doesn't it? Mm. Any comments from any members of the committee? He's got his hand up. Sorry, okay. Keith. Put your hand up, Keith. <clears throat> no, I'm new. I'm new. Yeah. Move it. You must move it. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's a bit of an odd uh, position for that house, but it has got the space. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think it would tidy it up personally. Like Ed said, it looks like half a house. Yeah, mm, that's true. Agree? Second. Yeah. Tom yeah. second. Keith proposed. Tom second. Those in favour? Yeah, um, yeah it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Well, so that's that one. Now we move on to. Um, uh, I am just going to stop screen sharing a second. Um, yeah, we we'll talk about the uh, first of all is the Cripps um, Patchway Metro Bus Extension. Um, this also includes the under the bridge replacement. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, if I could just talk, talk very briefly, um, I've had quite a few phone calls, although it's outside our patch, um, that the objections are that the residents um, in the area have suffered a fair bit with noise, uh, disruption, because they, yeah, they can't use that road, etc., etc., for, for quite a considerable amount of time. Bear in mind it was also extended because of COVID, etc. And now they want to, on Christmas Day, from half past midnight to five minutes to eight on Christmas Day, doing tamping work, and it follows it up on uh, from eight o'clock, sorry, ten o'clock on Friday, right through to 
six o'clock on the 26th Boxing Day, and again eight o'clock until six o'clock in the morning on the 27th. And they feel that they've had enough disruption over last year, really, practically. Um, and they're a bit fed up that they're now going to also do it on Christmas Day, Boxing Day on the 27th. It's probably too late for us to do anything as far as getting it stopped or, you know. And, and I can sort of understand that it's probably the, uh, the days where the railway is not being used so much and it's sort of an ideal time for them. But I'm thinking really on Christmas Day, Boxing Day, and the 27th, and I've had quite a few phone calls and a few um, uh, emails, and there's a blog as well going on on the neighbourhood North Bradley State about it. Um, and I don't know whether we, you know, whether we can write a letter or an email to Griffiths, to the builders, the chair. Yeah. Yes, Tom. Thank you. Um, because um, as it's a tampening ship, I think it's maybe packing or uh, flattening or anything like that. So can we ask the network rail and the contractor, um, Griffiths, to <laughs> that shares your surname, yeah. yeah, to to have uh, what is called the soundproof barrier, so that will be beneficial for um, I mean, help the the neighbors. Can we actually propose that? Chair? Yes, uh, Keith. Yeah, it, as you know, it's in my ward. Uh, yeah. Like you, we were inundated. Uh, I got told by Lisa, the communications person, that this was going to be a proposal, and I immediately said, this is going to go down like a very big lead balloon. Yeah. I said, these residents have put up with hell uh, with the extension and everything else, I accept that there is the need because this is important to be able to main, main, maintain the safety of the rail track in when it's in use. But, come on, I mean, 24, 48 hours, I mean, they could really have spared these residents all this problem. They are going to put up noise uh, screening, uh, but, you know, I think this mirrors something that went on last Christmas, if I recall, somewhere else. And, you know, the people get very angry, obviously, in a normal Christmas period. But this is not a normal Christmas period. More yeah. people are going to be at home with their families. And this is going to cause an absolute, well, unprecedented noise and disturbance. And I would say that from our perspective here, and I, I, you know, I respect Tony, the letter that you did, I saw that. And, yeah. you know, I know that the people in our area fully support the support that you've given them. And I really do think that Bradley Stoke Town Council should, you know, come behind this and say, look, you know, that the REL really have not given a lot of thought to this. The, the uh, project manager, uh, Griffiths, um, yes, they want to, or well, they're putting out that this needs to be done. But Lisa, when I spoke to her, she said that the letter was going to imply that if people had any concerns at all, they should make it to Network Rail and not the project team. Now, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I think they're trying to fudge this. Yeah. Net Network Rail must take full responsibility for this, and that's my, my view as a local member, and I know it's shared by both the other local members and the parish council in Stoke Gifford. So I respect Bradley Stoke a lot for coming behind us and supporting us and the residents on this song. I don't know whether we can get a letter written to Network Rail, Griffiths and South Gloss about it. Well, we can, yeah, we can, copy I, them all in. I can send an email tomorrow yeah. saying that how disappointed that you know, yeah. they think it's important what they're doing to the rail. On, on, on on three it. days of the year where, yeah. where yeah. it's uh, the, technically a national holiday. So Network Rail, Griffiths, <coughs> so. so that, that was... That was uh, Something I wanted to bring up. And, uh, a bit like you, Keith, we've been inundated with emails and objections to this. Just sad that they got to do it all. What's the why, you know? Or, 
I just also can, can I just sure. uh, go ahead. They, because there is they are planning to put a noise barrier fencing uh, during the duration of the work. So whether we have to actually check with them to make sure that it is sufficient for the uh, the purpose of the process or the procedure, and there will be any disturbance or what? What do you think? Because they are already doing a fencing. We're, we're sadly we're like two days away from it happening, um, and we I doubt, you know, all I think we can do is to raise an objection from us as private state town council. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I'd be right there. Talk to you. Thank you. See, you know, we've done our bit then um, to say we're not happy, uh, and um, that's it. <coughs> Yeah. So we'll have to move. Well, is there anything else on that on this particular thing about the? Uh, no. But, sure. Yes. Yeah. The, the good thing is that they are starting the lowering work, the road lowering work uh, underneath yeah. the railway. So that is actually what's going to happen. So yeah, I think yeah. Maybe go. And um, right, nine point two um, potential S one hundred six. Contributions arising from public open space requirements need to a development of 85 to 8 at Waverley Cottage east of Houston. So you, you have the, um, I'm not going to read that no. letter, but you have it in your yeah, agenda yeah. packet. So it was just um, South Gloss, obviously, they go out to surrounding areas and they ask, um, they identify the areas which are theoretically missing from the development and they wanted us to give sort of our view of the priorities of the list which are in table one. Allotments? I think I think allotments could be quite high on that list because that I is one yeah. area is very lacking in uh, yeah. yeah. Well and um, one of the good things about that the maintenance contribution is only five thousand three hundred and ninety four pounds eighty six B. As opposed to the maintenance on all the rest, yeah, which is quite awesome. considerable. I, yeah. I would agree with Andy. Most <laughs> definitely. We this this is uh, section one six money is going to go to State Gifford, isn't it? It's not yeah, like, it, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't come yeah. to us. But what South Gloss do is they go out to like the surrounding yeah. areas yeah. and they just ask what other yeah. um, people's view is on what they what the money you know the priority but but yeah so you can you don't actually have to list them all in order but if you identify one that you think is a priority then like allotments then but we think actually local allotments would be a, a real boon wouldn't it yeah I, I think personally most of the money will go to winterbourne because part of their allotment site has just been built on <laughs> at the top of beacon hill beacon lane but then perhaps, so perhaps we could say that, um, and actually I think that Bradley State residents can use um, Winsbourne allotments, so perhaps we could include that in, that would be allotments that Bradley State residents could use. So. But I think we need to explain that part to the, our residents. Uh, what the benefit is because when you look at the maintenance contributions, the informal recreation open spaces that has got the highest amount of money, hundred and seventeen thousand pound plus, you know. Whereas the allotments it's only five thousand three hundred and ninety four. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yeah, you're right. Might be worth what maybe put we put something up on our website to say that we can have, there are allotments available. <laughs> if, if there are. When there are, yes, when, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when they yeah. might be. Yeah. If they decide on that. Yeah. Okay, so that's an update. Um, so are you happy for me to reply there about yes, the allotments? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, Tom proposed it. Okay. I'll second it. So we get Sharon to write a letter. The guys in favour? Sorry. Yeah, it's in favour. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right, number 10. To deal with matters 
relating to health and safety, quarterly health and safety report. Would you have that in your agenda track? Yes. I think that um, the, the price was 600 not quid. Is, um, I think it was quite expensive. Um, First aid work course for two people, 710 quid. I thought that was a bit expensive. Which one's that, sorry? Um, um, the first of the 12th. All, it says all sites, first aid at work course, one day times two. Yeah, that's, that's two, two lots of one day is for all of the stuff. It's not for two people. Yeah. Yeah. So I still think that's a bit weird. Is it we've just been using April health and safety because we've used them in the past or um, yeah. do, we, do we try and No, it's definitely worth we could look at as we have yeah. gone out in the marketplace to look at other places. Definitely. Yeah. We can do that. There's actually different trainings and different trainers bring different things to yeah. sessions, don't they? So I, I, if I could probably get the uh, paramedic teacher who for the state course for probably a lot less than that. Mm -hmm. teaches all the paramedics. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, and that's got to be renewable every three years. Yeah. Uh, first day. Yeah. <coughs> so, um, so what we're looking at on um, this one, the health and safety report. We normally accept the report, you're happy with it, and then propose a vote of thanks to Vicky. What would be the top part? A person that compiles, compiles the health and safety report for Vicky, our staff member staff. Okay, okay. So we have Vicky. Yeah, Ben's like to propose the that would have been thanks to Vicky. Anybody else want to second? Yeah. Is Ed up? He's got his hand up first. Or does he want to say something, Ed? Go on. Yes, Ed. Uh, on the back page, it refers to an accident where a child had to have stitches. Yeah. Uh, even though there was no accident reported, I'm sure we reported it. But my sub note to that is is, is there a sign clearly there that says the gate is self closing? I don't know on that one, I can check that one out. That's not the first time this gate's got somebody either, is it? I don't think. Oh, no. the, other one, no, the other one was Brooke Y. Mm. And I think that was actually somebody swinging you on the gate. Mm. But yeah, we're definitely look at that. Yes, please. Yeah. Need to yeah. put a sign up just to cover our ass. Yeah. 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 Presumably we have got an accident, but. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, that, that's perfectly okay. Uh, so, yeah, we've had a uh, proposed and seconded. Uh, um, do we want to take a vote on that one? Andy? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that looks like that's you, man. So, to deal with the following financial matters to approve the bills in direct debit strip payment. There are, yeah, it's not actually any payments, it's just the, it's just the direct debits and the um, uh, payroll.
We've got here at Chris Rates, um, South Cross for £1,310. Presumably we're getting that back? No, that's from the town council office. Yeah, but as we're under 50000 we should not be paying rates. Because of COVID. If your rateable value is under 50000 um, you, you're, you're rate exempt. I'll get Rachel to check that one out. Yeah, Until April next year. Does that apply to all the other sites as well? Yeah, should do. I'm sure that's one that she'll definitely be on. Yeah, I mean, that it, now. I, I, I don't know where it, it... It's all businesses that are of under 50,000 rate, rates of all value. Um, they, they are exempt from paying rates until April next year because of COVID. I'm yeah. sure Rachel will be on that one yeah, just have a, yeah. just, just have a check because yeah. we may, may get a yeah. rebate on, yeah. on our rates. I just thought that. What for that? Good thinking. Yeah. Just for asking the question. Well, that's how she got made that other money that we've yeah. just had the two payments off when she asked the question. Yeah, yeah. so without that. Um, so, yeah. do we have a proposal for these particular direct debits? Yeah, I'll propose it, yeah. Yes, okay, Ed's proposed. Who would like to second it? Is that Andy's got his hand up? Yes. Yeah. So, those in favour? Yeah, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, anyway, the next one is to confirm the date of the next meeting being Wednesday, 27th of January 2021 at 7 o'clock. We'll share this planning and whatever else meeting it was. Have as good a Christmas as you all can, everybody. Yes, and with that, we can. All the very best to everybody else. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank 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 you.